one day, you know, I was traveling all around the world. I mean, I probably spent 70% of my time on the road, globally. And my father said to me one day, he said, one day you're gonna wanna tell someone, send someone else, and you're gonna wanna come home. And I'm like, no way, he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> he hasn't been out, of, he's never been on a plane, never been out of, you know, Orangeburg County. And I think um, he was right because I think that's why I'm full circle because of the fact that, you know, traveling all around the world is great, but, you know, there's no place like home. Uh, my mom passed away six months ago, and I remember at her funeral, they talked about all the great things she did for teaching kids and helping those kids um, through the community and all she did in the church. And, and I asked myself, what are they gonna say about me? <laughs> they can name all the big, big companies that Kevin worked for, and he went to Atlanta and he did some great things, but that's not a legacy. Um, a legacy is what they said about my mom and my father um, and what they did for, for others. So all of this is um, from my grandfather, and then my grandfather had 12 children, being my father being the oldest. So my father farmed all the land, all of this right here he farmed, but then now, you know, to make ends meet, he started selling off the property. When I first started this project almost four years ago, I had to go back and start buying the land back that he sold. But the goal is to really take all the land that he owned one time and turn it back into you know, farm production, that's really the, the objective here. Hey, Kevin. Yes. How you doing, man? Hey, Farmer D. <laughs> we're good. We're good chase How's you. it going? Good. <laughs> You're in it. I'm in it. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Great, great to see you, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. You got me into something really exciting. Yeah. A lot of work. Yeah, a lot of activity. It's exciting. Brings back the old days. <laughs> see it, man. It's really cool about Kevin, you know, is, and, and, the Summers family is, you know, there's farming in their blood, there's, there's farm, you know, there's sweat in this soil, right? There's blood and tears in this soil. And Kevin's got a technology background, you know, for 30 years he's been off the farm learning about technology. And now he's coming back to farming, you know, um, and saying, okay, how do I take what I know, the skills that I have in technology and apply it to the, the challenges that farmers face all the time? So we got a little problem out there. What's going on? Mixed of, mix of technology and um, good old fashioned farming. So <laughs> what's happening is that uh, the ground is too wet. Uh -huh, so it's not covering up the plastic. So um, we're gonna move to this field over here that should be a little bit more drier. So we have two tractors. Worst case scenario, we'll start bedding uh, with one and then you know get the other tractor to do the planting. And then obviously we, want to, we may have to let the plants, since, since they're coming all the way from Colorado, they may have to sit and harden for a day. So we'll, we'll assess that uh, once we get the plants here and then see what we want to do with them in terms of when we put them in the ground. But, but again, this is a high value crop and you know, we want to make sure we don't take unnecessary risk. We didn't even start with hemp. You know, we were looking at his, at his fields and his vision and we were thinking about you know, what crops make sense here. At the time, he was looking at pecans, uh, blueberries. It's not every day a new crop shows up, and all of a sudden you have a new tool in the toolkit. You know, we don't. We, do, we one thing we know about hemp is that it has a, an unbelievable um, history and and uh, diversity of, of beneficial uses in so many different industries, right? From from healthcare to um, to fuel to fiber to food. And so I started looking at it, and I, you know, Carolinas have a history of growing hemp. The Southeast was really one of the major hemp producers here historically. And you know, as I looked around this, this community, in the broader community of Branchville, and we always kind of look at the context of a, of a project, and overall you have a pretty depressed economy and, and a really challenged um, population when it comes to health. And so you know, our hope is that you know, hemp could be a really interesting, it fits the bill, and that it's good for the land. We have organic land that hasn't been farmed in a long time. Um, it's cutting edge, it's, it's a whole new frontier, so there's a lot to learn about it. Hey, this is a crop that can help stir on the economic development of a rural community that has a lot of farmland. When you say we grew up on a farm, we planted all types of vegetables. And we did some row crop too, so. And I've, I've been on a tractor 
Oh yeah. <laughs> because I, cause I was always the main tractor driver. Yes, I retired uh, in March. And he was kept talking about doing this, coming back on the farm, doing some stuff. And I was like, oh, I don't know about that. And yeah, he convinced me, like I say, he was like, okay, I, I said, I don't want to be out in that field anymore. Did, I already did that, that's enough of that. And he was like, okay, we'll get a tractor with Cavanier. So we started looking for tractors with Cavanier. And so I said, I'll help you for a while. I told him I'll help you for three years. He kept saying five. If you think I forget about what the number of years, I said, I told you three. He said, oh, five. I said, no, I told you three. And it may end up being five, but um, this is this is good. It's different, and I'm, I'm sure my father glad I'm happy about his sons getting together, put the farm back to work again. You know, so for Kevin, we're looking at on his several hundred acres, how do you preserve agriculture, make it a real significant, you know, part of the, the vision for his overall property, and model that for this area to be able to potentially create a larger vision for preserving agriculture around Branchville. The rural community's been deteriorating over time. The, the farming has gotten harder. Um, the economy um, has gotten worse. The health of the residents has gotten worse as a result. So, you know, the, the idea is that if we can be successful with growing hemp here, um, maybe that's the seed of a, of a crop for the future of this area in South Carolina that could, could revitalize agriculture. And could Branchville be kind of this inspirational small town story? Again, back to my passion and why I'm doing this is raising up the community. Like I told you, a lot of the people out here are from the community and a lot of them own, you know, they have anywhere from 50 to 100 acres in their family already. And they want to get into growing hemp. Once we've learned and worked out all the kinks, we'll help you grow next year. We can make uh, hemp in South Carolina just like we make Coca-Cola the same across the world. So I don't, how many plants do you think this will hold? These are about, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like, it's probably four or five acres. Yeah. Probably about 8,000 to 10,000 plants. So, we'll, so we get the kinks out on the yep. first 10,000 in here. Meanwhile, they got two tractors, so one tractor will keep bedding. So plants are coming tomorrow? Plants are coming tomorrow. Yeah, I got a truck coming from Colorado. Do you know how many are on it? Uh, I believe 120,000. So we're looking at... <laughs> substantial amount of plants coming on one truck. I think that this is very inspirational to take this kind of risk to jump off and invest heavily with money and work with great companies like Netafim and and put people into place to where they can, you know, see what they're good at and how to make it happen. You know, we're getting feedback from Netafim and the farmers and everybody, hey, this worked, this didn't. And, you know, in the long run, we can create something from its genesis to a very solid foundation and within a couple of years, you know, to bring economic opportunity along with cannabis into a, a place that needs, needs this, you know, and to see that happen means more to me than making money, you know, like it means more to me to see that, that people are creating the opportunity to bring back, you know, agriculture to a region that needs it in order to reestablish like their own power, their own strength. Oh, oh, there it is. Woo! So what do we need to love it? This little thing. This the only thing between, between us and 70,000 implants. <laughs>
got a lot of work ahead of us. What? You're gonna have to run some long days for a couple weeks. Next couple weeks are gonna be on nonstop. Here we are finally, a moment in time, and I feel really excited that hemp has finally got um, its time now to come back and see what it can do and grow it right and, and, and do it in a way that's gonna be good for communities that need help. This is a community that needs help, and hemp has this incredible opportunity to come in and, and, and be um, a solution for a lot, of these, a lot of these communities. As my brother said, I've probably been home more in the last three months than I've been in the last, the previous 30 years. So um, just coming back, and not only just coming back, but engaging with my older brother and my, my other two brothers and you know, my in-laws and cousins and you know, family and you know, bringing them, and they're expired just by you know, the vision of what we're trying to accomplish. And if it wasn't for them, you know, I, I have great ideas and great vision, but if it wasn't for them on the ground every day, this wouldn't even be possible.